So uh, this is about a 45 minute presentation. It was originally gonna be done in 20 minutes. Now I gotta do it in 50 minutes. So I'm gonna talk really fast. <laughs> Burnout. Um, you know, I was gonna tell you my background. I don't have time. Uh, Bachkaloop, find me. Um, um, all my presentations, including this one, are on my GitHub account. Um, I'm easy to find, Bachkaloop. Quickly, um, I don't have a PhD in psychology. So nothing I'm going to say should be used as therapy. <laughs> like, if you want therapy, you go to somebody who's licensed. It's just my ideas. Uh, I will have a drink with you. I mean, if you want to talk about it, I've done this a lot. Um, in this, like, I'll listen. But that's it. Um, you know, I'm not qualified to give you therapy. Why me? Again, I'm sorry for going fast. I always say that burnout um, chose me. I didn't choose burnout. And you're probably thinking, oh, well, he burned out. No, no. I, I have burned out, but that's a different story. Um, there's a scale, it's in Los Angeles, it's one of the largest um, local um, Linux enthusiast group. Um, I've been going there for eight years. Um, actually, my first week at Chef years ago, I don't work for Chef, I work for Docker now, but I actually gave the first presentation on Chef there like in 2010. And I, I got to know this young man here, this uh, Carlos Flores. And you know, I don't know if you, you people, I, you meet people at conferences and sometimes you only meet them every year at that conference. But we became really good friends, like, and he was a brilliant young man, energetic, and like, the last time I saw him, he was wanting to do, I've done like 10 startups, right? Um, and he was like, let's talk about this startup idea. So I show up at, um, at the, uh, it was the, the, it was probably, um, yeah, it was the beginning of 2015. And I just sold a company to Docker, so I'm on fucking, I'm sorry, I might cuss a little bit, but I'm on cloud nine. And I mean, I just sold a company to Docker, man. I'm coming to scale. I'm like, you know, you, my, my feet are like inches off the ground, right? Like I'm like rolling around. And then there's this buzz about this young kid that committed suicide um, the Monday before the conference. And I'm horrible at names. Faces like, I'm good. So I, it just kind of buzzed around in my head. And then they did the um, keynote and they took some time out. And I mean, literally just before they showed his Twitter um, profile, it hit me, and I'm going to cuss one more time, and that's it, sorry. Oh my fucking God, please don't let that be Carlo. And I, I, I melted. Um, I was supposed to do the closing keynote that day. I went out in the hall, I called my wife, crying. I mean, melted. Because I had two other incidents of people, hey, that's pretty cool. Um, I had two other incidents that, um, with, and I'll tell you about those, if I have time. Um, and I, I just lost it. I mean, I just, it was like, it was a breakdown. I called my wife, she's like, you gotta give that presentation. I'm like, I wanna go home. And no, you gotta give that presentation. I gave the presentation. About three days later, I get home and I, I basically, and so look at this, it'll take it in. That's, <laughs> like, I know, like, like it, he was a beautiful, beautiful man. I mean, he really was. Um, so I went ahead and I wrote this, um, I just had to write a blog post. And I work with Gene Kim, Phoenix Project and all that. I called Gene, I said, I need a place to put this blog. I, I don't know where it's appropriate because it's, it is, um, this is a Japanese term for um, basically um, murder by work, <laughs> like really. Um, because in the 70 days um, in Japan, they had such a bad problem with burnout. They actually had to come up with new terms to describe it. Um, so I wrote this article about these um, couple experiences. One was when I first got to Atlanta uh, there was a cloud group, um, it was like 2006, 2005, and there's, again, another young man who was energetic, uh, we were going to meet at this, uh, this thing, his business partner calls me and tells him he committed suicide. I'm like, we, we, like, three weeks ago we were having a conversation about this, like, unbelievable stuff, right? So here's the thing what happened. I wrote this article literally to just, I had to say something. I didn't want to change people's lives. I didn't, like... It wasn't like I was going to be the guy who like, hey, that's the go, you know, follow me because he's the burnout, you know, prophet. That weekend, so Edwin Munch is one of my favorite painters, you know, the Scream. But his, one of my favorite paintings by him is not the Scream, it's called uh, Red Virginia Creeper. And um, the impact within 48 hours that I got from that blog article in our industry was like this house being strangled by the fire. 
I, the, there was a tweet stream of about 1,500 to 2,000 comments on it. I got about 100 emails from industry leaders, people I didn't know, people I thought didn't even like me. And every email said, please don't tell anybody about this story. And then it was the story of, you know, some mild burnout, some severe. And, um, and, and within, you know, and then it just started cascading. And I realized, oh my God, this industry has a silent, really, really bad problem. Um, and that year, um, I got invited to do a keynote at a DevOps days on the burnout. And it, it started a nice cascading effect. Velocity from O'Reilly actually ran um, workshops. Even, even the hardened network people at Interop like, had a panel on burnout. Like, like 2015, the, the discussion started popping up. Unfortunately, it's kind of tailed off a little bit. Um, and even, I don't know if people know the DevOps survey with Gene Kim. I, I'm kind of a, a contributor, but I'm not a primary author of it. We even did some study on, you know, the health and um, how you collaborate and how you do automation actually has a correlated effect to burnout. So there's some interesting stuff in there. Um, quickly, I'm going to skip to um, to what you know what burnout is. Well, all right, I lied about cussing. It's the fucking canary in the coal mine, right? Uh, you know, like if you don't real, I'm telling you, I go to conferences and like even now, four years later, people come up to me like, John, you got a minute? And, and we have hour and a half conversation. Um, you know, uh, I just had a conversation with somebody this morning that worked for one of the biggest uh, financial exchanges. I uh, had to take a year off. You know, so there are lagging indicators. Uh, this video is up. You know, I'm going to have to finish by 15 minutes. So you can actually find this if you can find the Botchka Loop thing. Um, you know, I mean, the obvious are like healthcare costs, lawsuits, turnover. That company where Carlos committed suicide, um, a week later, another employee committed suicide. And so does an LA-based company. Imagine how hard it was for them for the next two years to hire any top talent, right? Um, so the optics, and then there's the, um, the leading indicators. This is interesting too. Uh, there's some research that says that the top performers in your organization are the more, most likely people to have burnout. So then think about that. Like, I've hired a lot of people. I'm sure a lot of people in this room have hired a lot of people. We, in this industry, we typically, I mean, if you're here, you're probably pretty good at what you're doing. I'm just saying. And, and if you hire people, you probably hire pretty good people. And what do you do when you hire people? You trust the hell out of them, right? Because you know, like, oh, I, I, I've, I've hired this person three times. Like, just do it. Let me know when something blows up. But just, but what happens is if that person whether you're a unicorn or you're not immune to burnout, um, what happens is that person who you trust and rely on might be going through this degraded thing where they're going to miss deadlines and you don't notice it, uh, missed opportunities. If part of their role is risk, maybe they're not catching the, the, some of the risk profiles, um, you know, less innovation. Maybe their role is innovation and they're just not, and you're not noticing it. Um, this uh, Jerry Polio has this thing called BDOC, and she says there are, there are stages here, and it can take anywhere from three to six months to get to kind of clinical burnout. It could minimally takes two years to get out of it. And then she talks about how the, uh, what they call residual burnout. Like, so the window, sorry, I'll just yell. The window between here and apathy, because you bounce back, kind of cure it, go back could be a really long time. In fact, you see this. I, you see this when people say, I had to get out of that company, right? And then what do they do to go to another company? And then all of a sudden it's like, yeah, I had to get out of that company, right? And, and those are, that, that's residual, that's a, that's a form of residual burnout. In fact, those are the good ones though. Um, and then there's the one that really, you know, the one that put me on the floor at that scale conference, which is A, this hurts our industry, and like it's a humanity thing. You know, I mean, um, you know, I don't know. You guys know Engine Yard, uh, Ezra. I always like totally screw up his last name, but the founder of Engine Yard, Ezra Zugwarich, um, he committed suicide. Um, we hired somebody, Eden Murdoch, the Debian founder, committed suicide. Um, I had a friend of mine, Stephen Nelson Smith. Um, he was the first person. That I, that I know of that ever described 
using containers, this is pre-Docker, for continuous integration, horizontal scaling. So you wrote a book called Test Driven Development with Chef, right? And, and he had this whole chapter, I'm like, holy shit, you can do, this would be amazing, do scale out parallel testing with containers in a, in a CI loop, right? Um, about three years ago, he's speaking at a, at a DevOps conference. 10 minutes into it, he says, yep, I pretty much came close to committing suicide last year. The whole room just, bang. I went up and I hugged him. I'm like, cry, again, I cry easily, man. Like, don't, uh, you know. Um, so I hugged him. I'm like, oh, God, please, like, you know, phone me, do whatever. And um, he didn't, the good, this good news, man, is, um, the good news is he did not commit suicide. The bad news is he left our industry. In fact, this was, I was one of 35 people at the original DevOps days in Ghent. I was the only American there. Stephen Smith, Tilton Smith, was only two of the people from London. He's the person who actually built DevOps days in London. And we lost him. He's not in our industry anymore. We can't learn from him. He hadn't written any more books. Um, you know, there are clinical definitions. Probably the most important um, definition is uh, a woman named Christina Maslach. Uh, she's a professor at Stanford. In fact, interesting side note, have anybody heard or actually seen the movie or know of the Stanford experiment? Anybody? So she is the, um, the, the woman who is dating that dude who ran it that actually talked him out of stopping it. And she's actually married to him today. Um, but side note, but she's probably the foremost authority in the world on occupational burnout and she has something called the MBI, the Maslach Burnout in, uh, Inventory. And it's a psychometric survey that um, either can be done individually or with a group or in an industry that basically tries to do a correlation of, you know, of symptoms of clinical burnout uh, related to exhaustion, cynicism, and efficacy. Exhaustion is a simple one, like death marches, that kind of stuff. In our industry, we've got, actually, I think we've gotten a little better at this. Cynicism is also an interesting one because it's the, um, you know, those people are a bunch of idiots, I'm going to do it myself. Like, that's a symptom of your starting to depersonalize. But the one I think that, like, like, bad word, but murders our industry is efficacy. And, it, and it's the one that where, um, you know, a lot of us in here are responsible for things when they break. Like, a lot of people get screwed over. You know, you think about the young kid at Uber that's maybe a junior sysadmin, works the evening shift, and knows that a mistake that he or she makes actually might stop global transportation and the impact of people, except in Austin, <laughs> you know. But, um, so um, I learned about the MBI actually through um, the IT Sec group, and they um, they actually ran one in the security, the kind of white hat um, DEFCON folk, because they said. We get tired of watching our friends die. And there's some interesting data here. I, 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 I don't have time to go through it. I mean, if anybody wants to geek out somewhere else, I'm, I'm up for it. But, but here's the thing. So I was like, okay, I'm doing this thing. I'm going to talk about MBI. I probably should run an MBI for myself. So for $15, you can go out and do an MBI for yourself. And I was going to do it for educational purposes. So I run it in a report. It's like a three-page, four-page report. And you know, the uh, exhaustion, kind of okay. A cynicism, not good. But like, I'm a pretty cynical person. But like, I am like fire engine red on efficacy. And so I could have sat there and said, well, this is just to teach you. But then I stopped and I said, wait a minute. Like, holy crap, man. Because in the bottom it says, if you're like in the 10 percentile, like, go get clinical help. And I'm like, you know, four. For, I mean, they're like, like, um, so here's the thing, right? So people who work for Docker, I don't think I've ever told this in front of uh, other Docker employees. I got a company acquired. I've done 10 startups. I've always been the person who kind of runs the company, does the whiteboard. Like, I'm in the fight. I get acquired by Docker, and I get asked if I want to move to San Francisco. I live in Atlanta. I got a really nice house in Atlanta with a pool. Like, like, with, like you couldn't, I could not afford this house out in San Francisco. So the, the question was, no, you know, no effing way. I, I'm staying in Atlanta. 
And there were some consequences to that because um, you know, there are things that happen in an office and Docker has a nice concentration of a lot of thought leaders in, in the San Francisco office. And like there were a lot of times I just didn't get invited to the party. Out of sight, out of mind. And that drove me, again, bad euphemism, but nuts. I mean, it, 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 was, it, it, was, it was real, and I didn't know it. So the, the, there's, a, there's a meta def, uh, story here is self-actualization, right? Which is um, the, um, where, and I, what I did is I really, I, I forced myself to think, okay, um, when I got that feeling of like efficacy and like, do they really love me or why don't they love me? Then I'd say, well, wait a minute. Do you want to move to San Francisco? Nope. Okay, then, like, shut, shut up. Right? I, I'm pretty much out of time. Uh, one last thing I want to say is, um, you know, we talk about faster, cheaper, safer, right? Like SDLC, continuous delivery, Docker, immutable infrastructure, right? Do we ask the question about respect? Right? Um, is it like a, a is it a first order primitive in what we think about? You know, and so, um, you know, I, I think that, um, you know, when we think about things about moving fast, building delivery pipelines, doing automation, doing, you know, all these things, are we thinking about diversity? Are we thinking about empathy? Are we thinking about something else called a workload balance? Another thing by Christina Maslach, where, you know, do you actually take into account how a company and a person profile um, and, and I'll just end with, um, you know, I think we need to make sure that respect in all its forms is a first order derivative. That is not the single sole solution for burnout. A lot of the research to be there. But the point is, um, you want to be faster, cheaper, safer, make sure the checkbox of respect is selected. Thank you.